ability, and that's why I'm very conflicted even with my pick now. I, I really believe that Fleet could absolutely be right with this pick. It, it could go 3-1. I don't think it'll go 3-0 no matter who wins, but you never know. These matches can swing. Somebody can get, get some momentum, find maybe something that's working, and, and that could be a wrap. We'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I hope they took some time last night to strategize going into today, think about their upcoming matches, and, uh, well, maybe come up with a certain strategy, a certain angle going into this one take their opponents by surprise and finally find their stride and their normal pace carrying them through into the semis. Well, luckily for us, we don't need to predict anymore and we don't need to wait anymore as this match will get underway. It's going to be Ketchup and Zoot to bring you all the action. Thank you very much, Jason. Ketchup, we get our first cast of the day right now. We've got... This is a pretty close game in my mind, actually. I know we've had some 3-0s going on today, but uh, Niemega Gaming and Maestro... <sighs> I mean, who, who are you agreeing with on the desk? I'm kind of in the same boat as everyone else in that it is very, very hard to predict. Um, mm. But that said, Maestro have been, as of very recently, very good on LAN in you know, a fair few of the modes. 2v2 or duel doesn't really seem to matter. Um, haven't seen as much of Maestro EU in this tournament, it feels like. You know, they've been playing a lot of their matches off stream. Mm -hmm. uh, a fair few, you know, we kind of have the unique luxury of being able to see all the sort of matches going on behind the curtain. Um, and. It's been interesting, uh, yeah. Thales. I believe yesterday they, they fell to last chance in the upper bracket, which <laughs> is, I think, more... Not really a testament to my three EU think, playing yeah. bad. It's just last chance playing incredibly well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've had already Cypher and Abek have got a bit of uh, camera time on stage. They're used to that uh, environment a little bit. It feels weird to talk about it, though, because Razor and Science Epp, I mean, they're very experienced this stage. I think for Science Epp a year ago, I would have said otherwise, but he's gained a lot of good experience. He's someone actually on the Maestro side. That he, he, he seems very quiet as a player, but I hope that his actions are going to be speaking loudly for us. Uh, as you can see, guys, Ruins of Sarnath is going to be our first map. We are just about to start the third quarterfinal of the day. It is Niemiger versus Maestro. If any of the matches in this round of the tournament has the scope to be 3-2, it's going to be this one right here. These four players are so ridiculously evenly matched, and just to kick things off, an Anarchy pick from Namiga. That's very interesting. interesting. Okay, we're going to be jumping over to Cypher straight away to see what he's doing with that. Slightly off meta, we've been seeing a bit of anarchy um, happening in duel. Uh, I wasn't sure we were going to get as many light champions taking place in 2v2. You don't have as much starting armor to work with. So if you take damage, it can be critically wounding, as we've just seen from uh, Silence Sap. But I'll be, uh, I'll be interested to see if Cypher can make some good use of it. I feel like on this map in particular, Anarchy is going to have such a wonderful job of being able yeah. to sort of get those flanks much faster than almost any other champion in the game can reach. So we're going to see if that could potentially be Cypher's role here, right? Avek's going to go in and cause the distractions. Maybe that's where Cypher's going to run and try and finish the job. Avek getting a cheeky double. Now it's 2-2. Two -two. Speaking of Avek, I mean, I think I would favor narrowly Maestro, but if Avek, if he can do what he was doing yesterday, he, he's got some godly shape within him. The, the potential this guy has to just tear apart a team almost single-handedly is unreal. I think he needs to be the one stepping up the most. Uh, in order to get Anyamaga across the finish line. He, I, I don't know why I'm always so surprised at the shape I see from Avek at a tournament, but he's unbelievably good at this. I'm loving the combination, actually, of Anarchy and Visor together, where Avek is just going to constantly pump that knowledge uh, into Cypher's head. They're going in for the two-piece attack. Avek's going to fall immediately, and Silent Sep's going to finish the job. The quad damage is now going to be here on that. Einstein, big damage incoming now. Heavy making life a little bit more difficult. And this could be a fair few frags that Amiga, especially seeing as there is Anarchy on the board, might be a little bit harder to deal with. Should be able to get two kills over here. They're not able to get quite enough damage out. His health is looking pretty good. He's been where it just misses the rail, but he wants to support his teammate a little bit. And that uh, starting shotgun from a distance, it still hurts with that quad damage. That's one of the main reasons Silent Sep obviously go for it fresh on sport and can sometimes be a, you know, a question of which one do you go for. Turret's going to be popped on the heavy just to block it off and create that obstacle, but the easy 2v2. Maestro EU starting to pick up a little bit of pace here, Zoo. Yeah, that's very good. After a quad, as long as you don't give it to the opponents, you kind of expect a small lead to take place, but now Avic and Cypher get themselves onto a major item, the Mega Health, already making reparations, getting themselves back onto the board and closing the gap. I'm actually really loving how coordinated they are too. Avik and Cypher quite consistently, unfortunately they don't win that group fight there, but um, they're constantly in the same place at the same time, where you're, you're forcing a straight up 2v2. That said, Razy now is going to go head on. Avik's going to fall. Ooh, the immediate turnaround rail was looking pretty delicious there. 
Yeah, Avic does deny the heavy armor, which limits the amount of health armor that Razy and Silence are able to get. You can see below the character portraits, they're very weak. There's going to be Silence that dropping. Razy still able to pick up a kill, and he's finding resources on the map, so maybe won't go down so soon. And just a quick flash of uh, the score on my end. Silence Set currently leading the way on frags. He's, got, so he's up on eight. Next player is Avic with six and the five of Razy and two for Cypher. And you know, it, it just shows me that Anarchy is an, it definitely an interesting pick for Cypher, but he's not reaped all of the benefits just yet. You know, I wonder if it's one of those sort of momentum-based strategies too, where I say, you know, going in face first, oh, 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 oh. that's the risk that you take, where Anarchy's going to have that unique benefit because he has the increased air control. He's not going to be as much of a slave to those guaranteed rocket combos because he can move himself out of the way. That said, the combat skill of Maestro EU is so high that Anarchy's still going to be a sitting duck anyway. Protection's going to go in Science Up's favor, but oh, completely hurts. swarmed in. You can see Science Up was patient as well. I tried to get a rail out. I mean, I think... Oh, okay. oh my god! Ran out of LGM completely then. Still manages to pick up the frag. That was and a close rail. Another thing to note about Anarchy is he's getting a plus one maximum natural health points every time he uses ability. The thing is, it, it can take seven or eight minutes for you to really get any noticeable effect from that. It's very, it's different to how it used to be when it's plus two or plus three maximum health. So I don't, I don't want Cypher to be relying on, on that for the late game push. Especially as if you sort of almost like, if you pick Anarchy as a late game champion, the problem you're going to have like right now, <laughs> that was really sick by the way. Oh my god, Avec with the pummel at the last second. However, what I was saying was if you go for like a late game strat and you're continuing to be behind the entire time, by the time you become a little bit more effective, has the damage already been done? Yeah, That's the concern. Right. But if, if Anarchy can start picking up some item control, his stack can be really devastating. If you Ooh. get rockets, that's going to be Cypher pick up a double kill actually. Uh, if he can have those rockets to shotgun to work with, he can get a heavy armor. It doesn't even matter if he has mega health or not at that point, because the injection is going to add to the overstack anyway. I mean, Cypher's got the potential to do a lot. You just need, you know, the, the jigsaw pieces to fit together for you. It's going to be a natural combo of Anarchy being the, the champion that's going to run those rings around the map and come up from behind, come up from the side. And it's Avec feeding that information to Cypher. Right? It's almost like a match made in heaven, but it needs to be a little bit more effective so far as another group fight isn't going in their favor. And that was two separate one versus ones as well, just straight up. Yeah, we're currently seeing a, a, a similar frag differential that we're getting from the first power up. It's not really splitting that much more. Okay, we get counter frag there from Avex, still about seven a, uh, a difference. I wonder if Sidestep and Razor are going to be able to extend things on the next power up. This quad is coming up in 10 seconds, and this could be a really critical moment in the game. We're going to go into Maestro's comms and actually find out how they're going to approach this. I got Mega, three. Probably going the hallway. He is still at eye. He's going secret, both of them. Build. Down. One more. Uh, um, I'm he's healthy. Down. It's on visor. I'm going up or yellow. Quad here. Watch out. It's like 80 on visor. Okay. T. Visor he's is on T. Uh, mega. One more team once. He's weak at heavy. Uh, heavy I'm going to top. I'm going secret. Actually, yeah, there was a lot of just sort of general communication about just how much damage Avec was able to do during that quad rampage. That did more than sufficient jobs, and Avec is popping up right now. Can he get one more kill? The, the, what is this run that Avec's been having? His quad runner is insane. You can see that Silence Up and Razy were just trying to stay alive during that. Silence Up made some good plays to get rid of the power up from Cypher, but that was almost bad because then you got to deal with Avic with the quad, and he was just insane. The score difference now is two. I feel like Avic hasn't died in. Way too long. I'm actually really curious to look at his kill count. 17 frags so far. So he's taken the lead over oh Sirencep, who's now on 16. And he's still doing the damage. He's so low on health. Eventually, Sirencep takes him out, but at what cost? It really feels to me like Avic is just one of the most consistent players on land. It's a, a continuous degree of just straight up excellence. Sirencep going with a defensive rock, actually doing more damage to himself, it felt. Um, and in this situation, Maestro you are barely ahead. Wow. That turret did a chunk <laughs> of damage. Oh, he doesn't quite get the rail shot. After, he gets a fade away. That was really nice from Silent Step. And again, he's almost tying with Abek uh, score-wise. He's got the same deaths as well, 13. So they're keeping their net really solid. I'm actually really interested to find out just how much max health Cypher is now seeing. As you can see, 109. So it's only really going to give him a few extra ticks. So the important thing is when he goes from just how many rails I think he can tank. That's that's what you have to really sort of pay attention to. 
And he's just got the power up again. He uses the injection. He should be able to last quite a long time in a fight, but he's got to make sure he's hitting the shots. Tarek going to block some of that nail gun damage, but he's going to find Silas F once more, who's really keeping him low. It's hard for a Cypher to push into a fight now, but with the heavy, suddenly re-energized. And they might be about to tie this up as well with the protection. That's going to be 31 apiece. And with a couple of seconds left of protection, maybe they could even snatch the lead from them. Almost felt like two wonderful combinations, right? The Avec Pfizer with the quad damage and then a full speed Anarchy with protection is just two fantastic power-ups that, as you can clearly see, it's now 31 to 31. The meter like, have been bringing this one back definitely impressively. And it's Cypher being able to pretty much just pile in, as, you know, seemingly risk-free. And again, just going in again, Avec pumping up that damage. Now the combination is starting yeah. to do what we assumed it would do. What was that lightning Good gun God. there from Cypher? That was awesome. Avec finishes the job, but the tracking from Cypher was gorgeous. He's going to health up a little bit. He needs to get over that 90-point threshold. That's where he'd be railable. Uh, he's uh, still pulling out the damage regardless, and Avic is just uh, picking up the pieces. And Science Step pushed away from Mega at a horrible time for Science Step. Five frags now. We've had a huge swing of score. I mean, sometimes you can just see the swing of momentum by just how the fights are starting to go. You know, Cypher seemed to sort of struggle at the very beginning because he would spawn, get railed, die, rinse, repeat. You know, the classic light champion life as it used to be. But now as things are starting to change a little bit, Unfortunately, he was way too weak to survive that fight, but it just feels like he's just turned that dial up on his yeah. general execution, general accuracy, the pace. Just trying to shock him down. Takes oh. a while. His, the damage he takes is pretty massive. There's 15 seconds until the quad. It looks like Razy might want to hang around for heavy. This means they're going to go for a last second push. They've only really just about got enough time to get over to the quad damage. Razy's on his own here, one versus two. Uh, but we're going to jump into the Nimega to see how they can fight on this power up. Nice man. Heavy, uh, Nimega now. Blocking, OG. Thank you, if you can. I don't know when. Uh, one is B, one is B tribal. Unlucky. Five. Heavy now. Into, and 22 is Mega. He's there with you. Okay. Fuck, I didn't get heavy. Tunnel. One is... Uh, oh, G jump, I think. Tunnel. T, 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 one. And one rail. Both rails, both. High and low. Yeah, he's dead. And one more LG. Jump up. He's tunnel rail. He's low. I'm, I'm coming to and him. Mega now. You can see that uh, Avek is sporting his deep sea diving helmet. <laughs> I was not about to say that. <laughs> I was about to say the exact same thing. At, uh, at this time, we saw basically the absolute reverse to last time. Never get that they had to now defend against the power up uh, of Maestro. This has been a significantly close game, too. Avic getting one extra rocket gets two, three. Silent Step falls down, and now one rail comes out, but unfortunately, it's going to miss. But Cypher picking up the pieces and just oh god, that was just ouch. that was just a, a, a sudden thud. <laughs> Might get the LG fight. Goes to the shotgun switch. He only does 10 damage. He needed a bit more of a significant blast there. Cypher gets away with a decent amount of health. He's now going to try and 2v1 Razy with Avec. Now a 7 frag lead. They're 4 frags away from taking the map 1 victory. That's such a classic way for Anarchy to win one of those fights, by the way. That he's shimmying left and right. And it feels like even though you're shot point blank, somehow the spread just wasn't meant to be. Razy's going to pick up 1 frag. Now we can't count out Maestro EU. They do have somewhat of an impressive comeback they have to make here. Only 4 frags left for me to actually take this first map after being down for you know, like, as good as the first half, really. Avec, he's going to get rail, but not before. There's some important shots from Razy. He does die. Is Silence up there in time to do anything? We've got protection up in two seconds' time. Cypher uses the injection. He's got so much to work uh -oh. with, and they're not able to do enough damage. They might just have to sort of panic, rush him, and just eliminate the power-up, because now he... Is the mega health up soon? No, but there will be health shortly. They need to land every defensive rail they yeah. can. This is going to be an anarchy with protection at the end of the day, but it's just going to be the peppered down rockets anyway. And that was a nice turnaround. Very, very impressive turnaround. That's just going to be map one. Really nice turnaround. That was the, not just map one, it was Maestro's first pick. So that means next we're going to go through to Awoken, which will be Nyanaga's pick. Um, uh, but it's going to feel a little bit bad for Razy and Science when they had a lead going into uh, quite deep into the game, and then sudden turnaround of that quad damage where Avic just went into god mode. 
uh, just the amount of work he was getting done was was unbelievable. It was such a sick run from him. It almost feels like the second that run took place, it almost gave the two players a burst of confidence because then on the flip side of that, it was then Cypher who almost kind of reached that next level at the same time. And he was able to start getting the really classic anarchy-based momentum that the champion kind of really made his legacy on in this game. Uh, well, you know, fair play to Cypher. He made anarchy work in that game. I had some, some doubts in the beginning, but uh, he, he managed to build up the stack. I think uh, Avec obviously taking the load off a little bit is going to help, but then he had free room to run around and do what Anarchy does best. Have that mobility, come into support when those opponents aren't expecting. They're going in for a two versus one or a one versus one, they're feeling comfortable, but then suddenly, suddenly Anarchy is there out of nowhere using that speed getting around the map so damn fast. I mean, Anarchy was always a really popular champion back in, you know, Ruins of Sana. That was always a map that uh, he and Slash combined could kind of just navigate way faster than everyone else, which allows those rotations to be bigger normally. Uh, you know, you kind of just have that mental timer for uh, the divide between Mega and Heavy, one being on the very top, one being on the very bottom. Anarchy can pretty much just loop around and pick them both up almost instantly. Now, with Awoken being the next map, it does beg the question, does Cypher go for a similar strategy here? Uh, that's what I'm curious about. I'm not, I'm... <laughs> I, I always don't want to say anything because I was quite surprised by the anarchy pick. I wouldn't at all in a duel, um, but in 2v2, it, it's interesting. But you need those wildcard picks in order to stand out, I think, and play away from what those teams have practiced. And that would be oftentimes going medium champion lineups. Uh, so, well, we'll see in a second, guys, because Awoken will shortly be starting. Maybe we can see an Athena. Maybe we can see... A slash or something? We're there's just going to have to find out. There has been so much talk over will we see Athena get picked, but it almost seems to never happen here at the LAN. I know this is a very, very tricky champion to pick, but it kind of looks like from what we can see here, a little bit more traditional, right? One visor, one item. This is the modern meta. Silent Step's going to throw the turret down immediately, pick up that mega health, and he's ready for a fight. Of course, Galena was banned, guys, I think. Otherwise, Galena, Aizen seems to be incredibly popular here. Uh, and they did get rid of the clutch, as we mentioned on the desk. And uh, Razy has been telling me that when he's uh, in certain games he's winning, he's like, his only way to explain what happened in the game is, yeah, they didn't ban clutch. And I was like, oh, okay, that speaks for itself then. <laughs> but if that has such a big impact that makes Razy, you know, sort of claim quite clearly that he's uncomfortable when he can't use the champion, um, it kind of almost speaks volumes of just how dominant that champion can be in his hand. Mm. He's, he's used that champion for so long, but this is that incredible. said, we're not incredible. going to be seeing him today. 2-0 for Maestro EU so far, but those stacks are looking pretty weak. Ooh. And there's Cypher getting a kill. Oh, yeah. refrag straight away. That's what they need to be doing, keeping that uh, tied up within the fights and obviously maintain this tiny lead they've uh, established in the first minute, but uh, ultimately meaningless until we really get to the first power-up where we can see kind of which way the momentum's going. A lot of frags exchanging right now, right by the Mega Health area. A little bit of overstack left for Razy after the Mega Health. They're both going to be able to get themselves on Heavy. Razy has it, but he's low on HP. He kind of needs Science to take the brunt of it, and he can see if he can do the work afterwards. Oh. Alec almost getting the rocket and still manages to pick it up. A double kill immediately refragged, though, by Silent Sep. Still keeping a three frag advantage, but we've got that quad spawning in just a second. Cypher trying to get close, doing really good damage, actually. We saw Razy swing super wide, but is there going to be a 1v1 after? I don't think so. It kind of looked to me like he was trying to disengage. No, he wasn't. He was trying to look for a different angle. That was such a good call from Silent Sep. And the important thing there was landing the rail. Unfortunately, he's going to be a sitting duck because wow. the super shotgun does not do the damage it needs to do. And now that quad, easy pickings. Can't reach it in time. It's now going to be Namida who holds it. Cypher gets one frag. Looking to take out the turret and get at least one more. There's still some quad left. Silent <laughs> Sep destroyed. And it's going to be nine frags each, just like that. Yeah, but... Only just starting to get to the end of the quad, actually, because it was obviously sat up on the Mega Health Agent. It's a lovely pick there from Cypher. Last second of quad. Just getting themselves into the lead. There we go. Avec is extending it a fraction more. And Cypher, I mean, he's got an amazing amount of health and armor. It's time to really get some value. Do as much damage as you can. I'd expect him to pick up a frag here. There we go. Small midder. I think what I really love about the 2v2 awareness now is not even being ready for the combos, it's being ready to combo a rocket from someone else's LG. You saw that <laughs> last minute change from Cypher. So confident he was going to kill, he'd already turned oh. round! Oh my god! Oh, what is going on here? I think that might just be a tie. I could have got overexcited then. No, no, that, 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 that final rail was definitely a tone. It yeah. was the rocket I was excited about. Okay, okay. Well, I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. It is in my heart, Zoot. Forget about it. <laughs> I saw a hundred, I got excited. That was good though. Yeah. Man, that really is disappointing. <laughs> very, very well. 
Uh, it looks like, guys, we can move into uh, Nemiga's uh, comms. They'll be heading over to the protection very shortly. Oh, I need some drink. Yeah. One order. 15 heavy. One elbow. Survive. Be gonna be. Come from lower. Go. Yep, go. Five, go. I was hitting visor, yeah. Nice, right. man. Fucking nice. I'll try to see oh, Megar. Heavy force, I think. Yeah. Don't die, don't die. That's bad. Oh, and that was such a nice trail of nail gun too, but unfortunately sitting uh, free for a little bit too long. Sidestep's going to pick up the heavy after protection, which is pretty bad news. At least it's just that one frag, but if it's going to fall down, at least it's going to take I mean, at the very end. The, the, the very run end. was pretty nice though. Do you know how nice it was? It was the nicest. So, yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Um, Science though, he's still got that mega stack to uh, work with. Good damage there on elbow. But the tri ball has seen so much effect. Some teams have been getting from it. Particularly AMD. Lovely rail though from Science there. Gotta hit those shots when they're just standing mid air. You can hear the totem getting some work done. We've got a rush from Cypher. That kind of kept, it distracts him a little bit. Yeah, it feels like that That totem giving Science of the knowledge was the reason he died. Yeah. He was so focused on that point that it wasn't ready for Cypher to just come around the corner. You very rarely see that, but here we go again. More knowledge from Cypher. A little bit patient. It can be such a mix up sometimes of when to go through those teleports, especially when you don't have all the information on deck. Oh, that's some damage and oh, a wow. half science step getting a long range rocket. But unfortunately, oh. Oh, 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 there's the trade. You love to see it. Yeah, for the perfect shot. It's allowed Razor to get position onto the heavy armor. You can try and do some damage over from Elbow. His weapon is not too bad. There's the mega health. He doesn't quite take it. The nails are good. Avic immediately retrades. He also oh. gets the tribot rag up to the, well, tribot sport as well. I feel like Avec has been such a star performer uh, in this series so far. And one big thing about these fights is it it's, it's very rarely seems to be um, a fight that is straight up EU's favor. You know, they get two frags and leave it there. There's always at least some kind of refrag or a trade that happens that continues uh, Namiga being in the lead here. Quad's going to spawn. This is going to be so important. Both going up the jump pad might have signed their own death warrant, but Razy with the last minute rail. Four health left. He needed that and desperately. Interesting that he's taking it from a science app. His stack was slightly worse, but he's got a couple of resources. So uh, I'll be careful on my judgment for now. He's still very vulnerable here. A yeah, couple of rails at once, maybe a rocket and a rail, he's dead. I mean, you can't really push corners without some information of some sort. You can see how careful he's being across Whoa. this. And he just takes tribal damage and immediately he has to flee. He can't do a whole lot with this. Looking for a cheeky rail angle. But there it is, he's, he's out of there. So he's not been able to do much with the quad, but I can't say it's a bad run because he stayed alive. He hasn't given it away. Maestro are already three frags away from the Omega Gaming now, which was, I, I mean, it was looked like it was not getting too far away from seven, eight or so before. Unfortunately, Maestro were a little bit too separated there, though, which kind of almost has them as easy pick and raise. He's going to retreat and Omega aren't going to try and take that giant rest. They themselves don't look particularly healthy either, especially Cypher. Um, and at this point, Namiga, the they don't want to rush too far in. You know, I think giving up a lead is something that teams do, dare I say, he's a little bit too often Razy with one HP. He's so weak that he can't consistently engage, and I feel like he's not really able to contribute a huge amount at the moment. Yeah, really nice for Cypher to finish the job on him. Like Razy's walking into a lot of those tribal angles, which he's he's not expecting until the lead's been reestablished. We've got a mega health position at the moment from Nemiga Gaming. Uh, heavy, though, will be the next item to spot. It's very close, though, between the two big items. So I wonder how they're going to play this one through. Looks like uh, Maestro is going to be attacking it heavy. Good rail from Cypher. He's oh. got a follow-up shot. Has he got one more? He's got the shoddy out, but look at that combo. He still eliminates Silencep. Mega Health also gets taken from Avec. And I think that's crazy. He just goes up the bounce pad and he gets sandwiched between the two Nevika players. Cypher showing that his rail is not to be underestimated by any degree. It's that really sort of like eternal big risk, big reward, and he's not afraid to take that risk. Speaking of which, Maestro Gaming, actually, we have some in-game comms before this protection I didn't do any damage. I'm weak. Hey, two, mega, uh, two, mega. Come, mega. Kill yourself, kill yourself. Oh, no, I'll cut the mega. Okay, I will kill myself now. No way, I'll I yeah, take. you can take. Yeah. They are both LG, I can't really do anything. Okay, I'm ready to attack with you if you need. Yeah, let's go. I'm both rockets. Eyes on mine, so I'm ready. 
Uh, he's very weak. Heavy is gonna be now. Protection is out in a sec. Okay. I'm coming water to spam heavy. Two health left at the end of that fight from a Cypher. And you could see there was... Science that really wanted to get the Mega after picking it up. He didn't want to have to sacrifice that point on the scoreboard. But in the end, he's like, okay, I'll give it up to my teammate. And then Razy, he wasn't really able to find any opportunities just because of the strong positioning that uh, the Omega had. I think it's also uh, choosing your targets, right? The fact that Razy took all that damage immediately. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time from the two of them, like, it's being able to point out, this is the threat, we need to LG it at the same time. And if you, even if you've got protection, that's damage you can't deal with. And just like that, Razy is able to at least pick one back up off the board. But the Mega, they've shown us an amazing job of defending against the power-up. It's one of the hardest things in this game to do. And the Mega oh. making it look pretty easy. And Razy getting distracted by the turret. He's not able to reload in time to attack Avec properly. He's obviously going to be so consistent with his shots. He gets a very valuable kill. And uh, now on the build-up towards the next heavy armor, he's got Cypher up at the rail spot, tries to hurt the turret himself. But then he gets sidelined by Silence Head. We've got a one-for-one. One. Razy's going to win that in the end. And I think this should be the, the last major items before we get over towards the quad. So this is, this is crucial. I think Razy might want to hold the rail position now. Yeah, I think there's a reason he's trying to disengage from this fight. He's going to want the biggest stack possible. So when this board inevitably spawns, he can both fight off and then have a stack to get Rampage. But just the LG is too real. It's going to be two versus one again, picking the targets, as we've said many times before. This is pretty disastrous. And there really is nothing they can do. Cypher is now going to get that quad damage. And here comes the damage output. Still Havoc who's getting the kills though, isn't it? 3D boy. <laughs> Let's see if Cypher can go on a bit more of a one. We've got a 12 frag differential for the moment. Maestro, I mean, it is possible to do something. It is possible to recover, but not if Cypher and Avic are going to continue to not make oh, mistakes. Oh, no. And the turret there, he gets a bit of the taste of the action with a... Uh, the, the quad 60s. It was a perfect place to drop the turret too, on the rocket. That They need that rocket to come back. And if you're trying to run away from him and try and get one of those weapons, bam, you run straight into it. Quad damage. See you later, mate. Easy money. Five kills left, and it's going to be an Amiga again taking this map. And on a 2-0, I think nobody expected a 3-0 in this situation, but it could happen from what we're seeing so far. Razy getting railed by Cypher, unfortunately, cannot win that one versus one. But they still caught Silent Step. They know exactly where these guys are. It's not a thousand damage on this life, actually. Shows it's just they're not getting those frags on the players enough at all. You should never be allowed to do a thousand damage in a single in a single life um, on any map. Oh, and finally they managed to shut him down, so they'll reduce some of the weaponry they have. He just sees that the turret there wants to pick up for a second, so has to get rid of it. I just fear that they're too late. Silent Step does not have a stack, even remotely. I, I know they're kind of controlling the rail room, but at this point, the LG has been so impressive. They don't need a rail to do damage at this point. Not that they only have four frags left to go. Like, here it is. Look how much damage these guys are taking. Razy finally gets one of those rails, misses the mark again two times in a row, and he's going to get punished by Avex Tribal. Okay, he's got that consistent, reliable damage. Even if it's just small amounts of chip damage from the Tribal, it's still something, whereas that rail just wasn't hitting. Avex is using the piercing sight. He's going to pass that information over to his teammate. And now he's going to be able to hold the upper position at the protection. And this is looking like, well, actually, I was just so sorry, only one kill to go. So it's at this point, it's already game end. over. It's one of those, you know, unwinnable situations. Deny one kill, like, I don't know. I highly doubt it. There's the rocket. Just needs one more. They haven't got rid of it. They're both so low. He's looking for the tribal to try and what? get it. Cypher's there. They're probably screaming at each other like they've got no health whatsoever. I mean, this has to be game over at this point. Look at the stack. Avic, just two versus one. Both of Maestro EU and came off better. Yeah. And here it is. He's going to get the heavy. And he's more or less indestructible. There's only about five seconds left of the protection, but you, you chase him. You yeah. know they've got it's... barely any resources. Maybe a light on a max between them, but not even that. That is going to be GG on map two. Two zero right now, but we're in best of five. So Nimiga still need one more. What are your feelings right now, catch up in terms of... Uh, what we thought and now what we're seeing. I think that Avec has been a complete animal. I think the way that second map ended is a perfect example of just how well he's been playing, that um, not only was he, again, the star fragger by a clear margin, but the way that final map ended, he two versus one Maestro EU completely to the point yeah. where they were forced to retreat. He then regained control, popped a piercing sight, and that's just easy. It was the turret. It was. Oh, man. damn it! Yeah. It looks so good. It looks so I, good. I was, I, was, I was a bit too hyped for a second, but I saw the outline. This is why I dislike this champion. He Cypher. makes sick clips look not sick. <laughs> We've got uh, a good highlight reel actually from Cypher during this map. He did, he did solidly, but it's so difficult to look as good as Avic.
for any other player on the on the whole map actually. It's gonna be interesting to see right now. Interesting to see for me if Avec is able to kind of just maintain this because he is consistent. That, yeah. I think that's the scary thing when you're on the receiving end is that it's not just oh yeah, he had a good game, but maybe he's just not gonna be able to do it next time. This is Avec we're talking yeah, about. So Pretty much does it every time. Qualified in the duel through the uh, upper bracket as well. He managed to beat out Tox. So we'll be seeing him tomorrow in the duel playoffs. Uh, the guy is just having another brilliant, brilliant tournament. I couldn't say so much about QuakeCon Duel when he played that, although he played insane at the QuakeCon 2v2. Him and Kels managing to get top four in the end. Uh, they played out of their minds uh, at QuakeCon, and it looks like Avec is just doing the exact same over here. But it's, it's the things that people were originally worried about in 2v2 back when it started. You know, Cypher was a big talking point of Cypher doesn't really look as strong in 2v2 as he had in Duel previously. And people were like, you know, there's not a lot of communication there. Um, the comms were a big problem, I believe, back in the day as well this year. And I feel like over time, so many of these issues have been ironed out where you, you can just see the on-the-spot coordination between both Avic and Cypher. How the second there's a fight, they're both there instantly. Snappy, fast, yeah. furious, no time to do anything. And they consistently win these 2v2s all the time. The combat skill is out of the world as well. This could be the final map. A 3-0 is not the result any of us expected. Well, this is Maestro's pick. It is Tempest Shrine, and we're going to get into the action in just a couple of seconds. Uh, it looks from the top that we'll see Visor Eisen again from the uh, two teams. And I, and you know what? It's funny, because I thought if Cypher played Anarchy on Ruins, I was maybe expecting him to do something similar here on Tempest Shrine, given uh, how fast you can get between the two major items on this map. Yeah, that's that's the, one of the main factors in Tempest Shrine, is the fact that the Mega and Heavy are pretty much sure they're on opposite ends of the map. The only way to really, I think, maintain control, especially in a duel situation, by the way, that was a ridiculously good fight, um, is to have these fast champions that can run that circuit around the map. But obviously, not the case here. Well, Avec and uh, Cypher did get the first frag, but now they're going to have to contest over uh, the second rotation of heavy armor. Uh, we've got uh, Maestro fighting furiously for it. They're looking quite good. Sidestep needs to get some damage. I love the fact that he's using that heavy machine gun. He actually hasn't got any LG Rail or rockets yet, but he should be able to gather them in a second. They're thinking it should get onto the Mega Health. There's a really good rotation. Actually, the, the items favor them a lot right now as he gets onto the Mega too. Unless we can see some great combat skills from Cypher and Avic, which is absolutely not out of the question, we should see a run of control. And look at that! Avic's up close! Silent Step takes a lot of damage. There's going to be heavy in a moment. Oh my god, that rocket was almost direct. Thank you, Lord Terrain, for saving the day. <laughs> yeah, that was a really interesting fight from my side, I think. You know, Silent Step's in a bad position now, but he's going to try and at least get some of that rail damage before he can retreat. The quad damage is spawning, and Silent Step stack not looking too impressive. He's got to be very careful how he approaches this. He needs some of these rails to hit, too. They're not landing. Flair going through, they're both huddled together. Silent Step gets pushed out, and I think at this stage you've got to think, Let's not challenge this. Yeah, just concede it. Try and get a rail or something from distance. Try and establish a good angle here for Cypher. If it's going to be quad, you know, it's not going to reduce the damage taken. Razy's going to get one of the frags. Cypher good. now temporarily a sitting duck here. Oh, good catch on the rail. Two oh. in a row, Razy. That was the perfect play. Now retreat, don't engage, get the rails instead. That was phenomenal, actually. It wasn't even with piercing sight or anything. Just some perfect rails they've been needing to land some shots like this uh, during the game. I think their rail uh, has been a little absent over, say, at least Awoken. So if they can start connecting, this could be really, really good for them. The rest of the power-up, they're not going to get any kills, so they actually benefited the most while Cypher and Avaco had control of it. There's a really sort of strange set of spawns you can have on Tempest Shrine, where if you spot right at near the rail, there's not a lot else you can pick up if you get caught off guard. You know, in that situation Cypher was in, where you kind of have to go for the point-blank rails, because it's ultimately all you've got. Oh, my god. Speaking of rails, these are just looking so good. He's going to keep landing them. He's hiding behind the corner. Makes it pretty difficult, but he lands one on Cypher. LG up close, but it is a shock, and I think uh, Avic missed the blast. Razy misses one, but he's still able to recover. Won't land the closer onto Cypher, though, and he might want to back off. He needs some health. The Heavy's going to be up in 10 seconds' time. He can kind of rotate around some of the smaller items on the map. Yeah, he's going to have time to get those resources back. As we see now, Razy establishing some of that control on Heavy. Uh, allowing Razor to take it, which is a good choice. Now, the piercing sight is going to be such an, a vital tool, especially seeing as 30 seconds away from protection. I like That's a lot of information. I like that he's getting the little uh, ammo crates as well, actually. And every little bit helps at this stage. We've, as we've spoken about before, the ammo changes are really beneficial. They just move away. They take damage. He's not going to focus the turret on this occasion. And uh, actually, on the uh, lead up to protection, we're going to go jump into some Maestro comps. Clear. Uh, and me, Bridge. Really. Heavy 56. 
They're pushing A. Eyes on guilt. Down. Nice. I'm very weak. I'm going double double. It's up. And me here, and me here. I might die. I need heavy. 55, right? 55, yeah. And me at rail. One nail, other one getting out, hold on. Both nail. Okay. Rear advisor. Advisor is weak A. Double bubble probably. The double bubble position. The elusive double bubble position. By the way, that 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 take on protection was insane. Yeah. And I yeah. love I love <laughs> the way Razy carries himself where you saw the most insane play and it was just by nail. That's cool. Like, it is it just another day in the office for these guys. Uh, these ridiculously crazy wow. plays. Because you can't spend any emotion. It's got to be entire focus. Razy actually running a pretty good spree right now. Cypher's going to drop again. Razy's sitting on 10 frags, having almost every single kill single handedly. That was actually really, really sick. Uh, they have the fight on heavy. They just got rid of Avec as the heavy armor spawns. They managed to take uh, the item and now they're able to perpetuate their control a little bit. Avec does pick up uh, a kill on Silence Up, but now he's just about to get sandwiched. And then, oh, the double <laughs> shotgun frag there from Razy. Beautiful work. And they might even be able to pick up some uh, off the spawn as they're not going to have any in, much in terms of items. I think we saw a steal from Cypher on the heavy, which is a nice play from him, starving them of the items. That's, that was actually really, really crucial. I think Cypher Bros, I've got a big disadvantage right now weapon-wise. Let's just do the one thing that's going to hit them the most, and that's take those items away from them. It's actually a really important play too, because it's kind of giving them that, that, that somewhat ace now. They've got the timing on their heavy. In 10 seconds, we'll see the heavy spawn again. That said, Silent Step just pick up a good frag. Razy should be able to at least clean up Cypher. So unfortunately, Namiga, even though they had that good fight on heavy, not really in a position to fight for it again. I should think EU a pretty decent time collecting this, especially now it's going to be caught. Oh, paying a bit too much attention to the power up though. Oh, this hurts a lot. The heavy's already been taken too. I don't know if he's realized it's not up. That turret even. Take yeah, he, yeah, out. Got timing. No timing at all, unfortunately. <laughs> Extra rail on Avec, but he's still, he, they've lost timing completely. That's unfortunate yeah. for Silent Step. He wasted a lot of time there. Is he actually going to go in for this? This is crazy. He still, he manages to hit the blast. So as long as you're clutching it out, it's all right. He does see it. I mean, despite the fact that he's missed out on items, he's actually done pretty well for himself. Now the heavy's taken, I think, just to give him and his team timing. Not necessarily to have the heavy himself. Razy's collecting many, many frags, which is giving Silent Set the luxury. Having to share the health bubbles, like, there's not a lot of resources split between them at the moment. Sharing is caring. It does take it in the end. He manages to pick up the kill, but Razy is so weak. If he can actually get even a rocket to land... No, it's not going to be the case. Savic uh, off the spawn gets that machine gun to connect. Heavy is going to be the next item. Currently, Maestro are roaming closest to it, but Cypher's got his eyes nearby. Avec joining him in unison, and Silence Hep, he's just going to get completely mangled. So Razy, he goes through the, the teleporter. He's also going to meet some rails. But there is still a seven frag advantage for Maestro. So not all is lost, and I'm sure they're going to be fighting it hard for control again. I feel like it might, like, you know, quite heavily on a power-up, you know, so many of these amazing turning points have actually come from mostly Avec picking up a quad um, and going ham, having an amazing sequence here, but one thing to know about Tempest Shrine is that the majority of the action when it comes to taking or controlling one of those pickups, it's, it's mostly heavy. Mm -hmm. you know, I think collecting a Mega is almost dictated by, hey, if we spawn near it, let's just pick it up, right? Because there's so much more important stuff on the map yeah. near heavy side. You've got the rockets, you've got the railgun, there's another light armor, you've got the power-up, of course, there are hourglasses, the double bubble. I mean, there's, there are so many important positions, but then again, if you're not, if you don't have that power-up, you're going to want to go over towards the Mega side or the heavy machine gun side. Uh, we have got the quad, uh, sorry, the protection that is just spawning. It is going to be taken by Maestro. He's going to quickly eliminate the turret. And uh, oh, Cypher's going to walk through the teleporter and he's going to say hello to the Silent Sept's turret. And we've almost got a 10 frag advantage. I feel like we're finally seeing Maestro waking up in this series with, I, I think, just a genuinely really, really solid Tempest performance. It's definitely a turning point, I think, you know, with how things are going, it should theoretically be a sort of 2-1 position here right now. Silent Step landing all of his shots, Razy finishing the job with the LG. Wonderful combination, you know, just dish out the damage with Rail on one side, LG on the other. You know, very few can actually kind of contest that. I don't, but yeah. I don't think it's been an enormously flashy performance from Maestro. I think, on the contrary, they've been incredibly disciplined in their plays. I don't think they've reached out too far when they've had power-ups, you know, they've tried not to take all the maximum risks with it. So if they can keep this going to the end, we're still 
not Nero. We've only recently passed the halfway mark. They can keep this up. They can definitely get a map on the board. And it's just the wonderful combos too, you know, Silent Seb. I, I really like seeing Silent Seb on the Aizen because he's always been a player that has had, you know, if there is a player that you would say is like a support role, yeah. um, Silent Seb's pretty much number one exactly. on my list. Like he knows how to play those champions that have disruptions, obstacles, just picking up the right targets. Amazing at securing power up. He really was a star performer back in the sacrifice days. It's so good really? to see him continue that in 2v2. That was going to be the Mega oh, Health oh, oh my god, that was yeah. sick. Damage. The rail behind to increase the speed right into a super <laughs> shotgun. That was just like a... Ah. That was super painful. Well, 20 seconds time, we're going to have Quad raise. He gets another rail to hit. That lead is starting to get extended by Maestro. And uh, then we go, they obviously need to make a bit of a comeback. So let's listen in and see what they're planning. One will be from ATP, probably. Fun. Or, ah, BTP. Yeah, Israel, Aizen. Both, both, eh? Both, eh? ATP. Aizen dead. Secret. I'm 30 HP, man. Fuck, I'm 30. Both there, both, eh? Both, eh? Both I will there. just play Mega, okay? Yeah. Zero, I love that. One is, uh, zero. Yeah. One I don't see them. Ah. One BTP. Zero. I'll be now. Heavy. Heavy strong. One, uh, yeah, one already one on heavy. And one BTP. ATP might be. Both BTP. Both BTP. And I gotta say, I, I think that was a really sort of perfect workaround for the quad. Cypher, just, he just railed, couldn't find anybody. Yeah, he said it. I, I, I'm wondering though, Cypher said that he's on low health, and that's why he wasn't joining Cypher there, this, sorry, joining Avic there, despite having the quad. And I'm wondering, if this, like normally in the game, I think that's probably smart, you don't want to leak away frags, you want to make sure you hold on to that quad damage, but I wonder if at that stage they should be thinking about, I've got to make take those risks. I've got to put myself out there and I've just got to try and clutch out some frags. Definitely the next power up, that's got to be their mentality. I, I think it could go both ways on that quad. Well, either way, it's going to be a one fight going in their favor, but not before Silent Sep can tie things up some. And it's kind of like you said, right? You can all make sure that this late on, the fact that it's four minutes left to go, but it's not really even the timer I'm looking at. It's, it's the kill count. There's 10 left to go, and Maestro, you are taking this map. Cypher playing so conservative and keeping the quad that he didn't really accomplish anything. Uh, it's not even like they re-established control because the control belongs to Maestro EU again. Look at how consistently they're the ones holding the top of this map. They're the ones Ooh. controlling heavy. This is the best place to hold. They've had it almost the whole time. Just uh, a little catch up on the player scores. We've currently got Razy actually at the top of the board. He's got 24 kills for 16 deaths. He's st he started to wake up a lot actually because beforehand it was Silence that was mostly picking up the frag leads for them. Silence has not cl uh, far behind at all. 19 for 14, 15 for 17 for Cypher, but Avic is 15 for 27 deaths. So he's had a bit of a nightmare. We've been we've been talking so much about him that he's so consistent, and he's, had, he's unfortunately for him had a bit of a nightmare on Tempest. Is there the possibility that we cursed him? <laughs> it's always the way. The second you compliment a player, unfortunately, have a bad game immediately after. You hate to see it, but oh. Razy on the flip side is having the opposite effect. This is by far the best game he's had today. So low, double bubbles right beside him. He's going to miss out on the rail, but the health bubbles are going to, well, at least make him survive a rail, but not a whole lot more. Sunset chasing down the Cypher a little bit. He gets that super shotgun blast. Brazy picks up the kill over at the heavy armor. And uh, with only two frags to go, they can smell victory. And maybe this can start giving them some much needed momentum because uh, up next we would move into Blood Covenant. And that could be super interesting, especially with some possibilities of light champions too. Got a fight here nearby the lightning gun railgun area. We've got one for one. That's going to put Maestro one away from the map victory. Sun's coming close. He eliminates one. And uh, Abic, he just walks with the pummel out, recognizing his fate. We're currently 2 1. First uh, match of the day where we're avoiding this, the 3 0. Let's see how far this can go. We heard the predictions of a 3-1. You know, Flea mentioned that he, he, he foresees maybe a 3-1 here. Um, I think the more common agreement was that it very well, of all the matches that can go through 3-2, it's probably going to be this series. It could be um, a profit. That said, uh, Tempest Shrine, as like you said, wasn't a particularly flashy game. Uh, there was no real, you know, miracle rampage performances. It was just efficient, clean, effective, exactly why these players, you know, are at this level of play. You know, Maestro, they have been such a consistent team.
nasty hit. There's plenty of little replays if we go into our next match, but if this would have been 3 0, Z, yeah. I would have ate my non existing hat. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I was absolutely expecting uh, Maestro to be the ones coming out the gates, uh, stomping away, picking up some map leads early on. But that has been totally the other direction. Question is, uh, Avic and Cypher. I feel like Cypher's kept up his end of the deal. They really have been walking around in unison a lot of the time. And I know I'm, I'm a big fan of Cypher in duel, but in team games, he's just where he struggled a bit more. Avic, I mean, if, a, if he has ever struggled a deal, which he basically hasn't, he's, I think he's more powerful in the team games. It's, he's just got an absolute knack for it. Uh, he's good at sort of commanding the game. He moves Cypher around like a chess piece. Uh, I mean, and obviously his mechanical skill, it looks so fluid as well. It makes it look easy and it absolutely, absolutely is not. Um, I could definitely still see a 3-1, but if uh, Razy's going to be able to continue at that level of play, it could absolutely change. I mean, whenever I think of Blood Covenant, though, I'm always going to sort of never count out Avec or Cypher on this map, no matter what the game mode is. Razy's grown strong on this map now. I know a long time ago he said for a long time that he believed that Blood Covenant was a map that he really hated playing back in the duel days. Uh, that was, you know, back last year, he mentioned it was one of his least favorite. Um, however, that said, the general, I think, communication and how, how quickly they sort of pair together and take those 2v2s really fast and furious, like Rottweiler style, I think we have a higher chance of seeing it on Blood Covenant than we did on Tempest. Tempest was so big, so spread out. Yeah. That kind of general strategy looks a little bit harder um, for Avec and Cypher to do. But we might see it here on Blood Covenant as we go in to our fourth map. Well, we're going to see something special here because it looks like Cypher's brought out another light champion. This time it's going to be the Slash. So we're going to get arms on him pretty soon. And that's obviously a champion that doesn't need to ramp up any health uh, as it's going up because it's not the injection this time. There is the Plasma Trail. Uh, that can be very good for zoning out, keeping control, especially around the power-ups. I mean, anyone that has played Quake Champions knows the sting of Plasma Trail on Blood Covenant power-ups. Like, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's one of the best combinations. It's the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> and, uh, and no doubt, it's going to be kind of difficult for the uh, Maestro guys here. Oh, the rocket from Avec was insane. He got some collateral damage. He got a direct and a follow-up. Avec looking amazing here in the first minute. Straight away with the heavy machine gun. Catches Sunset up the bounce pad. He's done an insane amount of damage again. And here comes the heavy armor. There is going to be Razy there, I think. And Cypher still manages to get rid of Silence if he was low after the heavy machine gun fight. But I don't think Avec quite noticed that that heavy was taken away. Yeah, looks to try and time it, and I'm assuming it's going to take so long. There's going to come a point where they're going to have to try and move and try and establish something else. If he hasn't got timing, that was like a fat 15 seconds left before he realized something had happened. That said, here comes the quad, and this is one of the main reasons we're going to see Slash on this map. If Namida can force their way in, if they can, you can see him going airborne, trying to come through the teleporter, but unfortunately, Cypher is unsuccessful, and it is going to be quad going in Miserie EU's favor this time. There's the plasma trial being used. Just cutting off the heavy machine gun area. Science up though, he's going to be able to stack himself up nicely. Alex is going to run right into him, just kind of weakening him a bit. But in the end, they just feed two free frags for him. Now Science up, maybe he can pick up some of his own momentum. Six to four in favor of Maestro. Five seconds left of this quad. Heavy machine gun only connecting once. A small burst, that's all that's needed. And they've also locked down Cypher over at the bridge stairs. And at that point, there's no way you can survive. It's one of the most, I think, unsurvivable places you can even be in this game. There's nowhere to hide, especially when there's one each side for the entrance. Science Step has a really impressive stack, so he should be able to win this fight. But here comes Cypher to save the day. But unfortunately, Heavy did disappear anyway. It did. It was it was a nice rush, actually, from Cypher, because it forced Science Step away from uh, Avec as the target. So he only started doing damage to both of them. They can now repair their stacks from that and not have avoided further frags. But Avec ends up going down. But we get to see some Cypher Slash, which I'm, uh, I'm pretty delighted about. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're all looking forward to that one. That should be a decent rocket, but no, it doesn't quite hit its mark. A silent step goes in for those defensive rockets. Not able to get the splash he was looking for, as that's going to be a pretty easy frag there for Cypher. Now, the heavy rotation has come back again. Mega, however, though, is going to get taken by Maestro. They trade it, but that's a wonderful time to catch him with the OG, but Cypher surviving die hard. One health left. That is why Cypher is such a legendary OG player. Yeah, and he manages to get the 425 health bubble, so he's not looking too bad again. He's got uh, ammunition too. Razy does take down one. He's watching on the teleporter exit. There is going to be a rush group, but the rockets are flawless. 
and that is going to be a one frag difference between the teams. And and his like his crouch slide was so fast, there was no way he could adjust his aim to just snap to that. The, you have to make the, the most godlike prediction to snap to where you think she's going to slide. That said, catches him in a wonderful a rocket. Perfect time for Ragey to catch him off guard there. But Sansa, he's actually just recently got the mega health stack, so... Is he going to chase for something now? There's going to be 10 seconds until a heavy. Should hear that one at the top, but he hasn't got the uh, rocket uh, launcher, so he can't make any rocket jumps. Attack, change his position. But he's going in for some aggression now. Avic nearby, I think we saw a shot from down below, but Avic takes him to two. That was way too close. That's uh, an unfortunate fight to lose as well. That's the kind of thing that you'd watch the bot back and go like, man, one more tick is all I needed. Because uh, the real danger is that he'd been able to collect it and then the Mega afterwards, but you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing and all that. Time step taking a fight. Weak stuff though. Oh, can't quite get that machine gun fired from distance. Only a few frags separating them. I gotta say, seeing as um, the Mega have not had control um, over the two power ups, they're only slightly behind. Yeah, and I think Science have just caught wind of the heavy. So despite not taking it, they get valuable information there. He picks off Avic, who just had the Mega Health. They found Slash who's got nothing to take, but it's a brilliant drop from Cypher. He gets one, but can't kill Razy. And there's a chase. Just use the piercing sight. He gets so little from that. It's essentially a wasted power-up, unfortunately, for Razy. It's the worst time to lose a power-up now. The ability cooldowns have been made universally. Ooh. It's a long time to wait, but Avec kind of climbing back into life a little bit. Unfortunate spawn, actually, for Silence. He has nothing to, to <laughs> reduce that damage. He kind of just had to sit there and accept his fate. Another rail comes out, and that's just a free frag at the end of the day. Another rail to support Cypher, who can clean up. Of which Avec hitting rail after rail can't hit the final one, but at this point it doesn't really matter. Got a lot of distance here. Not long until the quad damage. And will we see Namiga now finally establish some kind of point here on the power up? Avec getting surprised, but just instantly turns around, silent step, kind of regretting his actions right there. That's going to be heavy. There's not too long until. The power up spawns. There's going to be a couple of health levels taken by Cypher, but this is the attack. Cypher is going to move through that area. Looks like they've been trying that strategy a lot, but I believe there's still a Maestro player up the top with the, who picked up Quad. It's Razy. There's no item for ages, and I think he just wants to back away. It's actually Silence that that's doing all the damage while Razy keeps himself alive. No, definitely too busy with Silence Sept to even focus on Razy at that point. So he's going to sort of disengage a little bit. Only has one rocket left. Can he even get a single kill with this quad? Surely he should at least get one here. I don't think it's too bad either. If they can retain some control on the heavy, I would love to see 10 frag quad runs, but it, there, there's some satisfaction from knowing you're not you're not feeding opportunities to your opponents. At the end of the day, there's going to be many different rewards you can take here. Frags are only one. In this case, the heavy is going to be the big reward. But Avec picking up Silent Sep because unfortunately, you know, Maestro EU, they've spent a lot of this map separated. Mm. But I almost like that's the nature of Blood Covenant, where as long as you both have a rail and you can hit those mutual angles, a 2v2 can still be one, even if you're not both, you know, <laughs> in the area the fight's taking place. Oh, these rockets have not worked for Razy. Cypher gets a free frag ultimately. He's got 150 armor too. The mega health has spawned. His teammate's gonna pick it. He's gonna find one in the air. And this vanishes before his very eyes. Mega have pulled away slightly now. Three frags in the lead. And just before Cypher can even land a lot of these frags, Avic is just hitting these miracle rails. Yeah. Oh, he's been looking at it. stunning throughout oh. the series actually. Even after getting hit by that mid-air rail and adjusting where he is, he can still get the accuracy. Like, even the smallest little nick there could have caused him to miss, but you know, Cypher is no ordinary man. There's pressure right now on Maestro as they're about halfway through map four. They lose this map, they are eliminated from the tournament. And that, well, we've got an exchange over here at the power-up. Razy gets a rocket. It's only a tiny amount of damage. We're going to quickly jump into Nemiga here as the protection spawns. Oh, keep low. I'm over there. Okay, fuck it. I will try to just take heavy and disappear. 46, then mega. Yes, mega 46. Mega now. Go on Ray. Hi, Zan. I got mega. Hi. Good. We play heavy next. And I took uh, mega as well. One on heavy already. Come, come. Wait, wait. They're gonna oh. take a thing. 20 is mega around it. And one LG. They took heavy, I think. 
Fuck here. Go from, go from rocket. One nail gun now. One mega. One I got mega. Yeah, yeah. I feel like from what we saw during that power-up run, it's almost like shades of what we saw in Awoken way, even though the fights are coming, you know, theoretically, in Maestro EU's favor, because the Amiga are constantly getting at least one frag to kind of like recapture things. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be too much of a big loss. Like, it's been a steady lead so far, and it kind of keeps feeding into just how, I think, calculated these guys are being when the power-up isn't in their hand. It's like, right, we'll play for Mega instead, play for Heavy. Play for anything that's as far away from them as possible, yeah. and then just try and pick one off and even things out. Oh, oh my, my god. god. The rocket leading up to that rail, that was awesome from Avic. They didn't. They didn't do great on the power up run. Obviously, I think Razy had a fantastic uh, time with it. But that lead that they had beforehand, all of a sudden, it's been. It's come back into play. Maestro are playing from behind. They're trying to avoid uh, Nemega getting 18 more kills to get them to that 50 mark. Avex getting on the heavy. His stack is huge. They need to pressure. They need to have some timing for it. His over stack's going to get reduced a little bit. But as you can tell below the character portraits, that uh, the stacks are very much in Nemega's favor. The concern here really is just that that lead is becoming a little bit more significant. It was three for the longest time, and now it's a lot more than that. And it continues to just sort of climb as Avec is getting so much knowledge with this piercing sight. He's almost dead, but can he get one more shot? No, he can't, unfortunately. Can he survive for so long there? It's going to be two frags in the favor of Maestro EU. They're going to get the quad, but silent step so weak. It's going through the teleport. Very brave. Cypher trying to take the risk, and this taste did not pay off at all. Such a good timing to get himself onto a heavy armor. There might be an opportunity to get a couple more. They're four away now. This is pretty damn close. He is going to push up the bounce pad. I think it's now you start thinking about going through choke points. Flicker of damage onto Avic, but it's not much. We've got five seconds left of it. I think he's going to have to cut his losses there. Looking for at least one. Cypher taking big damage, but it's a risk for Silent Set to chase it and just go into his hands, of which Cypher gets one more kill. Silent Set hitting another wonderful rail. He's had pretty good accuracy, I think, on this map so far, from what we've been able to see. Yeah. But still. Amiga, they remain in the lead, and we've now sort of hit that 10-minute mark. This may have been a pretty slow-paced map, and I'm wondering if the time is going to become a factor here, Silent Seth. Can he get at least one more? Avec been pushed unfavorably far away and able to retreat, but both members of Amiga oh. two weeks to fight. Razy picking up an easy double. And here we go. It's, the it's just in one. It's just one frag between the teams. It's going to be heavy up in a second. It looks like Maestro are going to have control over it. There's a brilliant double rail from uh, Silent Seth. He's got the information on where Avec is. What route's he going to use? further visual cues for him to make that decision. There's pressure over there at the Mega Health. He's found it. He's got to land some damage. Razy's been on his own. He hits the rail afterwards. Oh, I can't quite get the vertical flick, but he gets the follow-up. Now Maestro have taken back the lead, challenging hard to put themselves on the tie-breaking map. Guys, we're going to jump into Maestro Com. See how they're feeling. That's just a big one. They are both weak now. Okay. 24 is uh, Mega. Yeah. I'll take. One at Nailgun. One Telly. Yeah, one at LG. Heavy now. Yeah, I'm going. Two kids, 17 or 16. I'm going to get LG. One at LG. Mega now, both of you. One at Machine Gun. One on the Pillars. Huh? Nice. Zero. Yeah. I'm at Rocket. I'm denying LG still. Okay. One on LG. I okay, cannot deny it. I'm going rock. What a run there from the guys there, and brilliant communication as well. They seem super relaxed. It's a high-pressure situation. It looks like razy has got the heavy beside him, but he's still going to pick up the item. He picks up the kills. They're now four away from getting us over to the next map. This has been a fantastic late-game performance from Maestro. It has been absolutely, and I was super concerned there with almost feel like the punctuality between Amiga is starting to fail them a little bit. And um, they tried to go for a coordinated attack on the protection. Avic was just a little bit too late on the uptake, so Cypher just dies for free. And then Avic, you know, is sure to follow after the protection is given, but it has been so many frags in such a short space of time. Maestro, yeah. you just completely 
turning the dial. And now at this point, only three frags left to go. They were so close. Zamiga just running away with this one. But look at the composure. Avec with an absolutely beautiful LG. Cypher getting one off screen as well. And uh, don't count these guys out. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily over yet. You still got to get yourself across the finish line. There are two minutes left to play. There's a power up in 30 seconds. I mean, if the power up goes dynamic, game is horrific. They get one more. There is an exchange. A one versus one here. Maybe between Brazy and Avec. The rockets are amazing. Cypher finishes the job for him and protects his life. The danger here is that now, Namigo kind of forced to stick together. They can't really separate anymore because if they lose any of these 1v1s, they have an unfavorable fight, kind of like that one. Now there's only one frag left. They can't risk it. Cypher's too weak, and unfortunately, even though that kind of looked like a trade, with one kill left to go, it's not going to be enough. And as many people have predicted, we're going down to a final map. Wow, I mean... I wasn't necessarily expecting in this match, and at the moment we're looking at a reverse sweep in map score. Brazy drops the 30 bomb there. The only person to do so, Avic was next on 26. I believe both um, uh, Cypher and Sansep had 20 frags at the end of that. Okay, we can check out some of the uh, top plays here on Blood Covenant. Uh, I mean, what a game from Maestro. This was also the pick from uh, Nyamiga. But uh, we, we saw a kind of return to style, a return to a I think like my expectations between Maestro and maybe now finally Nemiga, are they going to be able to handle that pressure? It, I mean, that's the that's the magic word, isn't it? It's pressure. There's, there's on the verge of being sort of reversed, three zeroed. Um, this is, I think, the difference in, in what, how much of a marathon three out of five is compared to two out of three. Where if this was two out of three, it already would have been a two zero. Pack it up, we're moving on to the next stage of the tournament. Whereas the second you get that extra map, there's more space for adaptation. The maps naturally themselves will change quite significantly. And obviously, the final map, tiebreaker being corrupted keep. So we're going to get an entirely different shindig as well. But I really want to point oh, out, yeah. it, felt, it felt a little bit to me like on, on Blood Covenant, the, the slash was really important, of course, for the general mobility, which is something that Cypher is very, very famous for. But at the same time, those kind of coordinated attacks on the power-up of, of it was many many power-up runs that were made by Maestro which is a huge contributing factor to why they kind of start to, to make up those frags at the end the coordination of slash versus visor all at the point at once felt like Cypher was going in really early and then Avec just kind of wasn't there in time almost felt like just just a few seconds of either miscommunication or just a lack of punctuality that you need to be bulletproof to make that combo there work. There was that one strategy of Slash by Heavy Machine Gun where they tried it over and over, but Maestro just expected it, it every never time. Worked. And they, they, they countered it brilliantly. And of course, if it goes wrong, Slash is pretty squishy, so she just falls. Despite that, guys, we will move forward. We've got uh, what could be a pretty explosive final map. Corrupted Keep stands before us. Who is going to go through to this semi-finals? Will it be Maestro or Niemiger? Uh, it has started. We are getting eyes and, and visor between the two teams. Let's see who can establish some early control. I'm actually really curious as to what you guys at home think. I want to see some predictions in Twitch chat. Given the current circumstances, <laughs> give us a one for Maestro and a two for the next Never go. I'll go back and check it. I promise. Either way, it's been a, a pretty good early start there for uh, Never go. But I assume this kind of exchange back and forth is almost inevitable, you know, on a map this small. And uh, Brazy just saying, ah, oh, signs up, I did some damage. You just, you, you take care of him. I'll, I'll pick up the heavy armor. We can get a little bit of control of this. It ends up being a one-for-one -one exchange, but uh, oh. I still think pretty decent. Even better if Brazy can actually find himself some health. He really needs some bubbles. But it feels like every time Razy is weak and has to retreat, you can almost put a lot of faith in Silent Step to kind of collect or pick up or whatever. There should be a frag, but no, Cypher falling down. That is wow. unfortunate. Floor is lava indeed, but it's going to be Avec refragging. Nice amount of health himself, but pretty low on the armor department. Oh they get these God. 2v1s in case. Silent Step gets at least one good defensive rocket to put Avex slightly behind, but it's not going to be enough. I think that was heavy taken by Maestro. Uh, Visor's got loads of health and armor. Uh, it looks like uh, Razy's the one who's getting a lot of damage in. We've got 10 seconds until the quad's going to be spawning. And the rotation is right after, so if you get quad, you get to choose your favorite item. And let's see the setup. Avec now dropping down, finds Razor for spawn. Science F trying to get the tribal. He's not doing bad damage at all, but position favors Nemiga. They're both so weak, though. Razor hunts down Avic. Cypher's the one with the quad. And he's running over towards. He does fall straight away. Avic picks it up afterwards, and he does refrag onto Razor. Probably going to follow up with Silence F2, as he can't hit those shotgun blasts. Three frag advantage for Nemiga. It was almost like a, a complete pass. Um, from Avec, like he, he was completely prepared for Cypher to die, and he was just waiting there on the sidelines to run in, collect, pick it up before Miser even have a shred of being able to run in. That was perfect timing, and just look at the rampage! Can he get at least one more shot here? 
And no, Pfeiffer coming in to finish it. Avex pretty weak, but I mean, his job is done at this point. He did so much damage in such a short space of time, and it was the perfect timing on that quad pickup at the end. You can see the amount of uh, fights that we're seeing take place on the Corrupted Keep. It is a smaller map. Uh, we don't have a rail gun, so you don't want to force any. You can't force those same long distance uh, fights. And so the amount of frags we see per minute can get pretty extreme sometimes. Cypher is getting two versus one for a second. He will go through the teleporter, which will earn him some position. Razy does take down Avec, and Cypher is really, really weak. He doesn't have tons of items to pick up, but there is going to be the Mega Health, which looks like Maestro won't contest. On the other hand, they will have the heavy armor, so I'm sure we're going to see a fight back in the middle fairly soon. It's all going to be about that setup time right now. There's a fair amount of time there, 35 seconds until the protection, but Cypher catching Silent Step, just looking the absolute wrong way. And the glorious LG Razy, very weak indeed as well. Avec picking up. I mean, easily, Cypher did so much damage, his LG is out of this world. We're seeing a lot of kills go the way of Yamaga for the time being. Uh, there is Razy up at the top. He get much done. He can't Avec. He seems to be stringing loads of those together. He's just picked up the Mega Health too. There's going to be heavy. Once more going to Maito. They might have to start thinking, we've got to get position elsewhere. And oh. Silent Sep with a brilliant rocket. A much needed kill to kind of stop the momentum. And here comes the protection though. Avec's going to take it. They're still challenging on damage, but it's just been an insane killing spree. I must admit, I'm very, very concerned about how regularly Maestro EU are being caught separately. Um, there, there are no straight-up group fights, and when they happen, they're happening on the power-up. At this point, Nemega are pretty much always way more stacked, Avec of which sitting on so much HP and a protection. At this stage, Maestro EU, they need to try and focus on running away, but as they run, they're giving up entire map control. And right now, I mean, that's a rock and a half place. I have no doubt there's going to be a Cypher here lying in wait somewhere. Coming in from one side, Raidy's going to fall. Silent Step soon to follow now. It's a two versus one. This guy can't survive, surely! He's going to be able to take down Silent Step as well. He does right now. He uh, Avec is on 18 frags, four minutes into the game. The next best player has eight, which is Raidy. This is ridiculous from Avic. Is he going to drag Nianaga across the finish line and get themselves into the semifinals? Where they would go versus uh, either uh, Liquid or Maestro CIS, I believe. I mean, at this point, Avic's just dragging in the wind by its collar, kicking and screaming. He's saying, I'm going to win whether you like it or not. <laughs> Well, because Science I'm going to kill it. It's absolutely not too late to do something about this. They've managed to control that mega side. They, they were relegated over at Heavy for a long time. Heavy, important weapon, uh, sort of important item to be taking, but you want to get that lightning gun. You want to be able to use that weapon a lot on this map, and you've got easy access to the rockets from there. So it's very good for Miser to make that transition across to this item. And now, I mean, it's very feasible that we could see that swing go the other way. It's all about controlling the Miracle Room, isn't it, so far? I mean, there's a reason we've been observing uh, ne Nemiga from pretty much the entire match. Oh my god, that was just a in. I don't think anyone wants to deal with their Cypher getting another Super Shotgun Blast. And it's kind of going to show that he's spawning on Super Shotgun and pretty much just piling into LG immediately. They understand completely that this is where they need to control. Speaking of which, here comes the quad damage. There's plenty of ammo, Cypher has plenty of rockets, and they're just looking for their final time to go in and try and catch them by surprise. Unfortunately, Cypher, his position has been compromised, and that's just a three versus two. The turret is going to be a pain Aww. in the backside. Razy getting two kills. Silent set with the quad, but he's pretty weak. Even after these bubbles, he has no armor. Is there going to be a light armor spawning soon? There's the 25 right next to him, but they're waiting for that uh, mega health to spawn. There's a light on the other side. He is going to go close, but he's not going to overcommit because that tribal could still eliminate him. Here's LG. We don't have many seconds left of this. And I think he's just misheard where a player was. He'll be able to chase down one. And there is a follow-up from Cypher. Unnecessary push as his teammate did die very quickly. And a shotgun right at the end. So we do see a handful of frags from Silent Sap. Even if it's the last minute, I'm pretty sure he'll take it with open arms. Yes, please, but they're still significantly behind, even though we had a fantastic quad. The point is, them again, now they're the ones sitting in the LG room again. So it's almost like yeah. that was the price they paid. They'll use that as currency to guarantee the control. Razy gets another frag, of which he gets the heavy as well. Very, very important, especially with these. And more than enough rockets, I think, to go in there and make some kind of push happen with the stack he's looking at. Get that tribal. Definitely get that tribal. It's, so, it's been such an important weapon. I think he spotted that they've left the area. So he can get himself some more LGM. Oh, he's not doing too badly on it, actually. We've got the piercing sight. No rockets landed, but he'll find one there as Avic walks through the doorway. Cypher jumping over another. He's got the LG position, but they're going to try and fight over for the heavy armor. He just ran out of rockets. He's got five health left, and Cypher flanks him. Now Silent Step's on his own. What can he do in this one versus two? Seemingly nothing. 
And Razy spawning way too far away to do anything about it. He had to understand that at the very least, if Silent Step is going to die, everyone else is going to be separated, so at least we can run into LG Room again. But speaking of which, we have Maestro ready to listen in. Take it away, boys. Okay. Have you after? Was it not taken? 24. Action soon. Five seconds away. I'm gonna kill him over this. One at Mega. Other one LG, come push with me. Coming. Nail, both nail. Bring it over. Over. One rocket. Rocket. Mega, 27, both there. I'm low. Absolutely sick run from Razy. Still seeing just a. Uh... The, rem the remnants there of the protection. They do have the heavy to go back to as and when they want. He is going to fight and push and eventually taken out by Cypher. Hopefully for Silence Hep, he's got some health and armor to work with. There's a light over there. Cypher clicks through the rockets. Cypher's going to get himself to 100-100, but now Maestro have got position at the top. It's only four frags of difference, and that's going to change again very, very soon. To depend entirely on how this fight goes. I think Cypher running in and out with Omega completely uncontested for free as Avec picks up Razy is a, quite a good start for them to try and make this lead even bigger. However, the turret is going to have its last laugh there. Razy gets a kill on Avec. That was such a sick last second push, actually, from Maestro. They really need that heavy armor. Otherwise, they were allowing the Omega and Heavy to both get taken by the Omega. Uh, and I think it looks like Razy's over at the Boneyard. He might be, he's on his own actually, but he goes one versus one. Avic was not supporting Cypher in that instance. He's holding over the central position because Mega was to spawn. Uh, Turret is actually helping him out quite a lot of the damage, but he's being chased, hoping to get a super shotgun blast out, but not able to. Four frags separating the teams here on the tie-breaking map, but that's going to be a double kill for Maestro. It feels like almost an element of what was working in the very beginning of this map was this really sort of punctual, just pincer in, two versus one before you even have a chance to see what's going on. But it almost looks like in the general matches themselves, like Maestro EU, they're a lot more, I think, aware of when that's going to happen. And uh, you can also see on the scoreboard, Avex on 25. From the four minute mark, he was on 18. Now, five minutes later, he's only got uh, plus seven from that. And we just seen the push in with the pummel from Razy. He gets himself the quad. This surely is going to be able to tie things up. He does want the heavy armor, but he knows he's got to get some support. Looking with a heavy machine gun. Now he'll move back for the heavy, hoping he could have done some damage there, but he'll probably try and push in. Avex, he gets eliminated instantaneously. And there's going to be Cypher not going to take long to take him down too. This is a very unfortunate turn of events for um, uh, Nomega. It kind of feels like they, they've lost their footing almost. They had such a wonderful start, but Maestro EU really showing their composure here that it's not easy to make an on-the-spot adaptation. You know, just not getting completely overwhelmed, something that they themselves were pretty famous for. And I said, Avec getting a point-blank super shotgun, make that two. Finally get able to get back in this, but it's just getting constantly traded. One each, one each. How long will this go for? I, this could even very easily be a one frag scenario at the end of this map. Speaking of which, here we are again. Yeah, it's back and forth, back and forth right now. Only a single point leader, more or less, means nothing for the moment. It looks like we're going to definitely finish this as well before we hit the 15 minute mark. Sansev and Razy, 2v1ing on Cypher, get rid of the turret. Only 50 health left, but it looks like Sansev's going to be able to recuperate a bit with the items hit by Boneyard. Uh, Mega Health also just gone over to Razy, and then three. Three seconds time, there's going to be the heavy. Razy rushing, Silent Step's a little far behind. This should go over to Nemega, the item. So there's a chance for Avec to do big damage. He has the tri -bolt. There's two players right in front. Silent Step trying to be careful not to overcommit. He's about to run out of LG, oh but God. he gets him on the lava. And can he get one more? No, Avec takes him out. And that's going to be just one. Maybe a two frag lead now for Maestro. That was a really unfortunate way to die. Floor striking again. and. My word, I am very nervous about this protection. If we even reach that point, we can see Razy pick up another frag and we might not even live to see it at this point. Is this going to be the full reverse sweep from Maestro? Uh, we've got uh, the players from Nebuchadnezzar. They're nearby the power-up that is soon to spawn. They do just take the heavy armor, which is a lot of resources from the best brilliant LG. Oh and they God. finally gets a full blast. Oh but it's God. a positive exchange from Nebuchadnezzar, so they're still going to get the protection. Two frags needed for Maestro, four required for Nebuchadnezzar, but Avic does not have a lot of health and armor. Mega does spawn. Maestro have got to be super careful. This could go down to the wire. He's pushing for the frags. He's got a turret there, but he'll still fall. And there's still the mega health that he can take. 
Speaking of which, he has been able to seize it. Razy taking mad damage. They've done a good job of outrunning this protection for a little bit. Avex, was, his hand was kind of forced, wasn't it? It was too much. Here comes a rocket. It's now 48 to 48. 100% this is going to be a close one. There's going to be one frag in it, surely. Avex. I just thought up for fight. ages. Oh my god, there's one getting two versus one. Science up against the refrag with 49 to 49. Avex only on 51 points of health. He's backing off a little bit. Is there going to be a two versus one opportunity? Stacks for Nimiga, they don't look. Well, they actually look equally weak, uh, the two teams. Uh, heavy looks like it will go the way of Maestro. Avic is going to bump up his health a little bit. Who's going to make the play? Who is going to make the play? Zook? That is the question. This is such a nerve wracking position to be in. I mean, there's, there's a lot of money on the line just for this last frag between the two teams. That drive oh was a full blast. He managed to hit more damage. Eisen's got next to no health at all. They're going to be fleeing at the moment. Sansev gets health, but he goes down. Nyamuka get through to the semis. That was the perfect try bolt to end all perfect try bolts. And what a fitting way to end that match. Wow. You can see the emotion in these guys. So much was riding on it, and they nailed it. You see that triple 40 come up, and you're like, right, let's capitalize from this. That was the moment. Ave can't believe it. He had an insane series. He gets 33 frags on that map. And I was talking about how he wasn't pushing quite as hard as he was in the first five minutes. The last five, six, seven minutes, oh my god. I mean, the time was right. The amount of damage he dished out combined with the stack he had, I, mean, I have never seen a play more determined. He just went straight forward. He did not look back. Havoc is just a nutty player. I mean, absolutely deserved. This guy's been playing crazy all through DreamHack. His shape is looking astonishing. I also can't wait to see him play the duel, but the story for his and Cypher's 2v2 journey is not over catch up. Well, there's plenty to talk about after what we just saw there, and who better to talk about it than the chaps over at the analyst desk? Yes? Don't ever listen to Zero Four, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> he, he, he tilted me. I was very conflicted. I was kind of leaning the Miga early on. He's like, no, 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 EU. And I was like, eh. Machiavelli. Just. I know, like maybe me, just, just own it. Just take the L. Just yeah, take the loss. Just, right. just we were, we were so close. Hey, we called the 3-2. It came down to the last frag. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really close. You did call 3-1. I think, you know. I, I, I did call 3-1, yeah. but I mean. <laughs> Are you trying to play down his victory yeah, right now? I'm trying to play down his victory right everyone, now. Exactly. Everyone was against my boys over at Namiga, <laughs> and yet they still pulled through. Didn't break a sweat. 49-49. What a Easy. great game. Easy. Great game, man. I, I love seeing like you know an Avic just jumped up and threw yeah. the headphones down and the emotion like, oh, that's just great to yeah. see. What a, what a great match. His space in his hands, he was yep. so relieved. And as he should be, because that oh, yeah. was such an amazing game. Okay, so let's let's break some things down here. Yep. First of all, talk about the impact of the Galena Ben. Because holy crap, we did see teams have to adapt and change their style completely with that, without that extra HP you can get from the totems, the extra max HP you can get, and the reliability of, hey, I'm, I have quad and I'm low, pop a totem down, heal up, and go. I mean, big thing with Galena, I think, is that if you're in control, it can really help you continue your control. Because yep. you can trap those teleporters, and if you can kind of force people into a certain area of the map, you can really just have that little pocket of healing waiting for you to fall back on whenever you need it. So the more you get into control, the, the more useful those totems become. And when that Galena pick is gone, when you can't play that champion, you're left a lot more to roam around the map and play more aggressively. In fact, you can even see in the last map in Corrupted Keep, a lot of times that lightning gun area up top will be loaded with totems now because that wasn't a factor. You see the lightning gun area is just a hotly contested The first all the like, time. minute of that of that map, Everybody everyone was just going through oh, yeah. teleporter kit and yeah. kill, yeah, teleporter kit and kill, there's teleporter kit no and kill. And yeah, there's, you, no you, there's no way you can do that when there's a Galena oh, yeah. play. You, you, the team that wins the fight, they get to they get to set the trap. And you see it all the time. Teams talk about it. They they communicate like safe or not safe for portals or I yeah. don't know. I and mean, it's it's one of those things. If you don't have to worry about that, I think it's a big factor. Absolutely. Let's take a look at Blood Covenant really quickly too, because Silent Sep, he had Dude, a he tear. Off. He had an insane tear picking up. I think it, what was like seven, eight kills in a row. Like disgusting. he was going off. Yeah, that was that was such a sick play. I mean, they got I think just about every single power up on Blood Covenant, Maestro EU. They just completely managed to shut down Amiga, and it showed in the score lines near the end. Yeah, because they were behind. They went on a nice run to catch back up, yeah. and then they took the lead. And you're right, they got several power ups in a row, which enabled them to do that. Not to mention, Silent Set was red hot. I mean, there was one time uh, somebody's jumping from Mega towards Catwalk, yeah. and he was going towards the jump pads with railing. Just turned around, flicked up, and it was dead. I was like, wow.
And it's speaking really of good. power ups, Avic steal a protection at the very end right there. That yes. was oh yeah, that was That's, devastating. He had like 40 HP. There was a good chance they legitimately could have won off the back of that for Maestro. But Avic, he did that yesterday as well on Runes of Sarnath. He was able to sneak in, pick up uh, protection away from the enemy team, even against two players that were there. I, I think Cypher should uh, buy him a beer or steak dinner after that because, uh, <laughs> you know, he really did save that win for them. They needed that protection. If Maestro EU gets that protection, I, I'm sorry, that's, that's a wrap. It's game yeah. over. The fact that they got the protection, put it in the balance, and they were able to get the win. All right, Absolutely. let's take a look at the top three plays from that series as well. And honestly, I don't think top three will even do it justice. I hate to be the guy that was picking those out because there was so many plays that it could have been a top 20, to be a, to be fair. Yeah, yeah there's just amazing stuff. What do you even mention? Yeah, the Anarchy pickup here for, oh, for Cypher on Rinse of Star Enough. We had, Sla uh, actually we had Slash as well on Blood Covenant yeah. for Cypher. Like, we did see quite a few different champions being played and some light champions, most importantly. Yeah, I mean, Anarchy is always a bit of an, an iffy, uh, it's a dangerous pick, but you can't forget that since 2v2 lost so much longer than Duel, especially since you don't have to reset after the end of a round, you can really get that health boost going. You get a little bit of HP every single time you use that injection, you go with that ability, mm -hmm. so over time that adds up and near the end of 15 minutes, you'll have 120 starting HP. That's pretty huge. And I think also with the Galana ban, it's not bad because now you don't have that extra health. With the injection, you can maybe save those health bubbles for your teammates and kind of like, well, yeah. I'm, a, I'm my own personal Galana right now and I'll save yeah. the health for you. So. <laughs> and last little thing that I do want to like bring up really quickly before we head to a break is we were backstage, you know, talking, watching, watching the game and I, we were saying to like, you know, 0-4 and Tokyo Punch-Out, it's, it's great to see if you compare this tournament to Tours how much more even every team is and how many more close matches we get. We're not really seeing those stomps. Yeah, we did have two 3-0s today, but yesterday was full of so many 2-1s that I can't even count. Yeah, I think just teams are getting more familiar with each other. The VODs are out, there's information out, everybody's learning off each other, and so that just that just raises the skill floor for all the pros. So the level of play in general has just been elevated. Yeah, same thing goes for just for the composition of the teams. Uh, last year, DreamHack and even in Quakecom, the teams were still very fluid, they were changing a lot, people were switching, trying out different setups with other players, but right now we're kind of really, things are starting to settle, you're seeing the same yeah. pairs emerge and keep yeah. going through different tournaments, so. Well, that's